Hello and welcome to the Cisco Certified Network Professional, CCNP, Routing and Switching Course, offered by Simply Learn. The last lesson focused on network maintenance. This lesson focuses on the troubleshooting methods. Let us begin with the objectives of this lesson in the next slide. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to list the different network troubleshooting process steps, discuss the sub-steps involved in problem diagnosis, explain structured troubleshooting methods. Let us start our discussion of the troubleshooting process in the next slide. The steps of the troubleshooting process are as follows. The troubleshooting process begins with reporting a problem. In many cases, users report a problem. However, there are also instances when IT personnel report a problem in the course of maintenance. Step 2 deals with diagnosing the problem. Diagnosis is complex and time-consuming. The reported problem can be distantly related to the underlying cause of the problem. In Step 3, the problem is resolved. It is important to remember that a problem is not resolved until the user confirms it. Let us look into problem diagnosis in detail in the next slide. As discussed earlier, the problem diagnosis step is complex and time-consuming. There are five sub-steps within problem diagnosis. The first sub-step is to collect information. As the problem report often does not contain sufficient information, the troubleshooter collects additional information by talking to the users and the IT personnel involved. The next sub-step is to examine the collected information. In addition to the information collected from people within an organization, the troubleshooter uses network information to diagnose the problem. Such information includes baselines, collected when the network is operating normally. Furthermore, network event information, such as syslog, can also be helpful. At this point, the troubleshooter needs to eliminate potential causes to make troubleshooting more effective. Elimination is based on the information collected in the previous steps. However, eliminating probable causes relies heavily on the troubleshooter's knowledge of networking in general, and his specific network in particular. In the next sub-step, the troubleshooter answers the fundamental cause of the problem. This may involve coordination with other IT personnel to check how specific technology may behave under varying conditions. Structured troubleshooting is instrumental in this sub-step of problem diagnosis. In the last sub-step, the troubleshooter verifies his hypothesis. The only way to be sure is to take the appropriate steps. However, if changes to the network are required, the troubleshooter must follow the change control procedure and develop a rollback plan. In the next slide, we will discuss structured troubleshooting procedures.